Good evening, friends, neighbors, family. I said, almost said enemies, but I, I hope I don't really actually have any enemies. I don't think one enemy and all his hoodlums. But welcome to the August 19th. Happy birthday to my cousin Mallory. The August 19th, 2020 version of Hashtag Divas with Krista. I hope you all are doing great tonight. Um, my heart is feeling burdened by all the things happening in our country and just all of the fires in California and not to mention everything else but that's why we come together we come together to remind ourselves of who God is who we are what our mission is no matter what and to do that by remember by reading the word Hi, Amber. Hi, Kelly. It's been a while, friend. So, I'm glad you all are here, and I'm glad to be here. Once again, <laughs> the fan is blowing and my face is itching, <laughs> like every night, because I haven't turned that fan off for months. Months, months, months. That's all. Isn't it funny how, I was thinking of this the other day, so... My neighbors are from Cambodia, and they've been, they've lived in Nashville for 30-something years, probably 35 years, and, hey Jess, and, um, and I mean, I'm not in the, in just telling a short little thing based on stream of thought, I'm not at all making fun of my neighbors at all, because if I went to Cambodia, guess what, um, I would not be speaking Cambodian or uh, I can't even remember the name of the language is it Cambodian um so but anyway um so my sweet neighbor M he uh he's learned English but you know he has a super thick accent and Liam his wife like she understands a lot but she really doesn't speak much English um, and so anyway, the other day he, they have an amazing garden and, um, so he said, you know, Hey, you want some apple? And I was like, Oh, I don't understand what he's saying. And I was like, what? And he's like, apple. And I'm like, pepper. <laughs> he's like, apple. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I don't know. <laughs> he like points to the apple tree. I'm like, apple. He's like, yes. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry, M. Because <laughs> once, once you know what they're saying, then you're like, duh, why did I not know what he was saying? But anyway, the whole point of that was like, when, when we don't grow up saying certain pronouncing certain making certain shapes with our mouth like then you can't do it what was that word that I did I don't remember what it was anyway it was a th and um so just certain sounds that he can't make in English and I sure can make in <laughs> their language so it's interesting you know I and I didn't think of this as a spiritual implica implication but Honestly, if you think about like what scripture says about how we've been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son, I think is what it specifically says. But, um, and we learn a different language. Um, and so our mind has to be renewed, our heart has to be clean, you know, be healed. And this is a process, just like learning a new language is a process. And um, so, anyway, 
That's why I'm thankful that I speak in tongues more than any of you all. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> That's what Paul said. He's like, I'm thankful that I speak in tongues more than all of you. And I wish you did too. Because that's just the language that God gives you, lucky ducks. That will edify your spirit, lucky ducks. Aren't you lucky? And it's like, oh yeah. It's not so weird after all. Hmm. Anyway, that's just a little a little <laughs> side note on, on that. When you think about it, it's like, oh, there's a language in the kingdom. Yes, there is. Yes, my friends, there is. So... Jess, I didn't cut. What, Kelly? That's so cool. You spoke in tongues for the first time on Sunday. Well, thank you, Holy Spirit, for giving that awesome gift and activating it. Boom. That is for your building up and just another way for the Lord to move powerfully in your life because he gives good gifts. That's so cool. I love it. On to very much less more important things. I didn't get my, I didn't cut my hair because <laughs> it would not look like this if I did. But I did get my hair cut today. Thanks for noticing. Not very much, but it took forever. Don't know why. It was like, it was like slow motion. She was really sweet. But she was like a sloth. But you know what? I love that because I'm like, sleepy time. <laughs> but I didn't love that in terms of productivity. I was like, wow, this is taking a long time. <laughs> but you know what? My hair smells good. Once a year that I use Aveda products because they're so expensive. And I'm like, yes. Like, that. Because I would go to the Aveda student place where the students do it. So it's only 18 bucks, which is great. Which is why she was probably being so slow. But I was kind of like, come on, get it done, girl. Like, get those layers in there. And, um, yeah, so probably Aveda products are so expensive that probably the little droplet of shampoo she used on my head and conditioner would have been $18 in and of itself. But I got a haircut. So the way I look at it is my haircut was basically free. I just got the great products in my hair once a year and my hair smells good. I'm being a little facetious, but there's no way. Get this. Okay, how much would it have been? 135 times two. $270 for... Um, like... What is this? Okay, not this big. But, like, imagine... This is a good size container, don't get me wrong. But we're talking, like, where my hands are to the top of shampoo and then another one of conditioner for $235. I am not joking you. And I was like, I'd rather come here every day and have them wash my hair and it'd probably be cheaper. It wouldn't actually be cheaper, but it's but it smells so good mm. so anyway one time in my life did I invest that and my hair smelled awesome that whole time and was healthy and then back to suave y'all not really I don't use suave but you know not Aveda I wish they made Aveda knockoff products and if they do somebody tell me Kelly, I want to hear your, I want to hear the story of um, your experience. I love testimonies of all the ways God blows our minds and gives us good gifts. And maybe you heard my story about that when I was 12. Um, but if not, but I'd love to hear yours. I really would. That's so exciting when he does a new thing, when he just like goes, bam. And we're like, what? So I would love to hear it. It'd be super cool. All right. Well, today I'm excited about um, what we have to talk about tonight in our readings. 
especially the middle one. And actually this morning, I had the opportunity to share this in a devotional time for Global Outreach, the missions organization that I'm part of. Um, that's um, like my covering as a missionary. So I got to jump on the Zoom for their morning devotions and share with them what I, I want to share with you tonight. So I've already had practice. <laughs> you know I don't practice for this, so um, it'll be extra good tonight. <laughs> or you'll be like, is she reading this? <laughs> uh, yes, Kelly, how do we make that happen? Um, let's make that happen. Oh, Kelly, maybe. Um, think about this. Think about if, so if I don't do this on my, or, wait, here's another, here's another thing. We could do a Zoom to Facebook and you could share your experience. That's something I want to do more of. I, during Devos with Krista, is I want to not always be with Krista. I want it to be with you who want to share your testimony. So how about that? We need to do a series on that. Hmm? But then what about all the Bible readings we would skip? We got to find we got to find a balance cuz scripture is so important. Anyway, okay, let's plan on that. I really want to do that. For tonight, though, um we've got a reading again from Ezekiel from Psalm now, not from Deuteronomy and the Gospel of Matthew. And you're going to see how it ties together, but we're especially going to camp on the Psalm the Psalms tonight, and um, and I am going to share an experience, just like Kelly had an experience with the Holy Spirit this Sunday, it sounds like, and we can't wait to hear it. Um, also, I'm going to share an experience I had with the Lord about two or so months ago, and honestly, I can't remember if I shared this before, I don't think I did, but if I did, you can get to hear it again. <laughs> so, anyway, let pray and jump right into the word. Father, thank you that you tell us to come to you um, and, and you don't make this long list of requirements for us just to come because Jesus, you're the one that invited the weak and the heavy laden to come to you. And Father, you're the one that said when you told the, when Jesus told the parable about the the master who had the banquet and the feast and and all the people he invited didn't come so he started inviting just anyone who would come at all you just tell us to come and lord i thank you that you don't require that we make ourselves clean but that's actually what you do best is you clean us from the inside out and you keep us clean too just like i'm thinking of this like um, when you told Peter about washing his feet and you were like, those who have already had a bath only need their feet washed. Like they just need kind of like just that check-in, that intimate space to keep checking in um, with you. And so I thank you for that, Lord. These can be those times. We just praise you for every testimony, every breakthrough, every way that you give good gifts just even for Kelly's testimony and what I'll share tonight with mine, Lord, you're always on the move. And I just, I just thank you, Lord, for the testimonies that are coming out of that. I just ask for more. Whatever it is, Father, that you want to give, we just say yes. We want to be kids with open hands, um, not because we're greedy, but because you love to give good gifts. And so we want to receive that and just have Thanksgiving be what flows from that. So thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence here. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, let's get rolling, hey? Um, Ezekiel, the prophet. We know he, Ezekiel goes through the ringer on some of this stuff, but he does not stop bringing the word of the Lord to the house of Israel because they needed it. They needed the word of the Lord. And tonight is no exception. Ezekiel 34, 1 through 11. But like I said, we're not going to spend as much time 
Oh, sorry. I guess I didn't sleep enough during my haircut. <laughs> oh, shoot. I really do, though. I'm just like, I'll take that head massage. All right. This is the prophecy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophecy against the shepherds of Israel. So think about that. Like, is he actually talking about shepherds? Probably not. So don't get confused. Here we go. The word of the Lord came to me, Ezekiel. Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, even to the shepherds, Thus says the Lord God, Ah, shepherds of Israel, who have been feeding yourselves. Should not shepherds feed the sheep? You eat the fat, you clothe yourselves with the wool, you slaughter the fat ones, but you do not feed the sheep. The weak you have not strengthened, the sick you have not healed, the injured you have not bound up, the strayed you have not brought back, the lost you have not sought, and with force and harshness you have ruled them. So they were scattered because there was no shepherd. I feel like I need to underline that even right now. I told you guys. Sorry. I know that I am interrupting the reading. But I told you guys that when I journal or when something sticks out, we stop. Well, I feel this is so important that I'm underlining it in red right now. Also, I use red when I'm... If I'm writing down a scripture that sticks out to the where I want to actually copy it down in my journal, I use red. Why? So I can go back and anything that's in red I know is going to be straight up the word of God. I use blue. I know that's my messed up thoughts. <laughs> Not messed up, but you know, that's my just processing. When I use purple, that's when I feel the Lord begin to speak something to me that I'm going to probably need to go back and read again. And I want to be able to find the purple. I use green when it's prayer requests, when I'm like, what was I praying? Or when it's answers to prayer. So, that's free. Anyway, so they were scattered because they, there was no shepherd. And they became food for the wild, all the wild beasts. My sheep were scattered. They wandered all over the mountains and on every high hill. My sheep were scattered over all the face of the earth with none to search or seek for them. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, declares the Lord God, surely, because my sheep have become a prey, and my sheep have become food for all the wild beasts, since there was no shepherd, and because my shepherds have not searched for my sheep, but the shepherds have fed themselves, have not fed my sheep. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my sheep at their hand, and put a stop to their feeding the sheep. No longer shall the shepherds feed themselves. I will rescue my sheep from their mouths. And they may, that they may not be food for them. That's crazy. He's like, they're even eating their own sheep and all the other things he just said. So who are the shepherds of Israel? Well, the leaders, the teachers, the ones who would take care that God actually appointed to take care of his people. And he's like, shepherds of Israel, we need to have a come to Jesus meeting, <laughs> literally. <laughs> And then he just launches into it. It's crazy. So here it's not like, I mean, think about it. It's not like God's just in a grumpy mood. He's like, this is not okay. And do we need people standing up saying, this is not okay? Yes, we do. It doesn't mean they're having a bad day. It means there's injustice. It means something ain't right. And it needs to be addressed. So God comes in and is like, boom. Here is where we draw the line, and here is what I'm going to do about it. Now, what's interesting, I just want to point this thing, this point out, and then we're going to move on. But if you remember what Jesus said to Peter in John chapter 21, very end of the Gospel of John, which we're not going there tonight, but we know probably 
you may be familiar probably with the story where Peter denies Jesus three times, right? Then Jesus comes to Peter after he's resurrected and he restores him. How does he restore him? He says, Peter, do you love me? Asks him, not one, two. He asks him three times, do you love me? And Peter's like, you know, I love you. Yes, Lord. So he just cut to the heart because he knows he's the traitor. He knows he denied Jesus when he was always like, I'll never leave you, Lord. And Jesus is like, well, we'll see about that. So, um, but then after Peter says, you know I love you, every time he says that, Jesus goes, feed my sheep, tend my sheep, feed my sheep, right? And right here, the Lord is saying to the shepherds of Israel, he's like, all the things that they haven't done, they haven't fed their sheep, they haven't taken care of them, they haven't protected them, they've fed themselves, they've just, you know, they've been like a hired hand. Jesus talks about that. Like, you've been like a hired hand, not the shepherd. Um, so, what was Jesus' instruction to Peter? And he said to Peter, Peter, your name is now, or Simon, your name is now Peter, which means rock, and on this rock I will build my church. It's like, Peter, you're the guy. You're launching. I got to go back to heaven. And and you're the man. <laughs> Feed my sheep. So like, what is Jesus? I mean, look at Jesus knew this word. Jesus knew Ezekiel. He knew. He knew it was on the Father's heart. He knew anyway. But he knew it not just by spending time with the Father, but he knew the word. Jesus knew the word of God. How do we know that? Well, you see, when the devil tempted him, what did he do? He didn't just come with some like little pithy saying like, Go away, Satan. You're such a jerk. No, he's like, the word of God says, the word, you know. And then he just leveled him because he knew the word. So that's just a good reminder. But interesting, Let's we're going to let Ezekiel 34 and God's anger at what these shepherds were not doing and what they were doing against the people of Israel, against God's people. Like, they're in the leadership, and they are not leading. That's a word. So let's turn now, guess where? Psalm 23. And Ezekiel would have known Psalm 23. I guarantee you. You know, I think I've just decided that when I feel like I need to yawn, I'm not going to try to not. I'm just going to let it roll. Mm. Let it out. So I apologize if I make any of you yawn. <laughs> um, the Lord is my shepherd. Psalm 23, right? So to the response we read the Lord is my shepherd but this is what we're going to focus on here for the next few minutes right after we read the gospel reading so let me just set the stage for this which we already did Ezekiel 34 and now listen to what David says and then I'm going to bounce off that here we go a psalm of David the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside still waters he restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now we are going to go to directly to the gospel reading, and then we're going to come right back to Psalm 23.
Matthew 20, 1 through 16. And this is what Jesus said. See where you can find the connections. See where the Holy Spirit tap, nudges you. And Here we go. Laborers in the vineyard. And Jesus said, Jesus said this, For the kingdom of heaven is like... Okay, let me stop right there. Even though we're not going to focus on this, what every time we read when Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is like, we know he's giving us a key to the kingdom. So, we ought to have a ring to collect all those keys. Because guess what? It unlocks things like keys do. For the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, You go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right, I will give you. And so they went, going out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour. So that's like 9 a.m., noon, 3 And six every three, I think that's right. So, um, going out again. Okay, I lost my place, sorry. So, going out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, and he did the same. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing. And he said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? And they said to him, Because no one has hired us. And he said to them, You go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more. But each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But the master replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to, I choose to give, to this last worker as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first and the first last. Hmm. It makes me think. I need to think about this. Because I've always thought, now I said I wasn't going to talk about this, but I'm just going to pose this question. Because... I've always thought when Jesus said the last will be first, then the first will be last. Like, oh, if you push your way up to the front, Jesus is going to be like, no, you go back. And then the, the last, like, like the lowest, will be first. But this statement is in context of, like, who gets paid first or who gets what. I need to think about that. If you have any thoughts, I don't think I've been thinking about it in the context, in the right context. I'm just realizing that. But I don't know what context to think of it in. But that's not what we're going to focus on tonight. So that's a cliffhanger. Um, let's go back to Psalm 23. This is what I want to focus on. Oops, I didn't hold my place. So, we see here, we, I, I would say that we know from the reading in Ezekiel, God's really focused on the shepherds of Israel. <laughs> Scooby's like groaning down there. She's like, Mom, where was our walk today? And I said, Scooby, it got dark. I'm sorry. I had to be gone. So I said, first thing tomorrow morning. We're going to go on that walk. And she said, mm. 
She always lets me know when she's not happy. Mm. <laughs> True. Um, and so aside, even though this is in the gospel reading, we know that Jesus, um, Jesus, sorry, I'm distracted by my phone and I need to not be, it needs to not be going off right now. I'm so sorry. So we know that Jesus in John 10.10 10 says he's the good shepherd. And so think about it in this context. Everybody in Israel, I mean everybody, would have known Psalm 23. David's most, King David's most famous psalm. Absolutely. The Lord is my shepherd. And they're talking about, they're talking about Yahweh, the Lord God. Right? The one God. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And then David writes all of these things of how he leads me besides the waters. When Jesus comes in and he says, I'm the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. Do you not think that they would have had to be like, what did he just say? There's only one shepherd. You know? I'm saying, like, they had to grapple with that. They had to be like, what does this mean? Well, we know what it meant. Son of God. Um, but besides that, so that was, that's a big deal. And Jesus is like, I didn't come to destroy the law and the prophets. I came to fulfill it. Hello. I am the good shepherd. I lay down my life for the sheep. So look at this. Um, so we can see, the thing I want to focus on is four, uh, verse 4 and 5. Maybe 6. Maybe all of it. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. So this morning as I was preparing for Devo's, I was thinking and I got this picture of a sheep with a shepherd with a rod and a staff. And I know there's different purposes to that, but exactly. And this might sound silly, but I was actually envisioning a shepherd with a sheep, like they're just hanging out in the field, there's no danger, and the sheep is like, and the shepherd just starts scratching, you know, scratching the sheep's butt with the, with the um, rod or with the staff, you know, just like, they got flies all around, you know, back in the day and even now, and just like, and that kind of, just that touch, just that nudge, just that like, I'm the good shepherd, you know, a good shepherd takes care of a sheep and however they need to be taken care of and he has a relationship with the sheep he said my sheep hear my voice and know my voice and that's true the sheep would know their shepherd's voice and Jesus so Jesus said that he's like my sheep hear my voice those people would have been like knowing what he was referring to because they lived in a in a agricultural pastoral you know, that kind of culture back then. They knew what that was about. So I pictured too then how the, it's the the rod and the staff is like a Swiss army knife. Like the shepherd uses it for so many different things. So when the sheep start going off, he's like, hey, you know. But you look at it and David says, your rod and staff comfort me. Well, if you just think, oh, he just whacked me with with the staff or with the rod but when you know so going back to the good shepherd if a sheep knows oh the shepherd's good it might sting or hurt but they're like oh he's good so we did that for a reason to help me because he's good so it's all predicated on that but then you think of so there's these you know him giving him a little scratch in the hiney giving him a little Hey, get back in line. Don't get, don't, don't go off there into that no man's land where you're going to get lost and hurt. You come back here. And then you think about when they need defending. And this is what I wanted to focus on tonight is, is God, Jesus, as not just the good shepherd, 
but as the fierce defender. Those were the words that were coming through my heart today. Fierce defender. What does it look like as the good shepherd because he's good to focus on that facet of a fierce defender? And I pictured, you know, when a wolf comes in, right? The wolf comes in and the shepherd isn't just like, oh, look, it's a wolf. He like leaps just like David did. Which, why do you think David could write this beautiful song? Because he was a shepherd. He knew, he's like, God was teaching him as he's taking care of the sheep. He's like, oh, just like I love my sheep and I take care of them. And I jab the lion and the bear with my staff and I just defend him. And I die, leave my sheep alone. And then God, like, comes in and is like, that's what I like. And David's like, wow, I'm going to write a song about it that everybody's going to sing forever. Pretty cool, huh? So, fierce defender. What does it look like for our good shepherd to comfort us? Because you think about it, how could a sheep lie down in green pastures and go beside quiet waters. If they were constantly feeling threatened, if they were like, oh, who's, you know, do, do I have to watch my own back? If they felt that way, they wouldn't be at peace. But if they know, oh, the shepherd takes care of me. There's somebody bigger than me. I don't have to always be watching my back. He's got my back. That's when you can go beside green, I know, lie down in green pastures and be beside the still waters. So, I want to share with you guys an example of of Jesus being the fierce defender of something that happened to me uh, just a couple months ago, and it was in an inner healing session. So, I don't know how many of you are familiar with inner healing, but it's just basically, I mean, there's more components to it than this. It can go deeper than this. But it's just basically where you um, have someone who will pray with you and help listen to the Holy Spirit and walk through things in your heart that may not be resolved with Jesus. So it's really, it's like a, it's just a more formalized way to receive the healing of Jesus into every part of your heart because let's be real there's things that we shove down so far we don't even realize we do it and then it comes out in one way that we're like where did that come from you know sometimes people can even um this actually happened to me I mean just being real like many several years ago um like 11 years ago I guess it would have been I started having panic attacks and anxiety um, and it was just long story short um, but it was undealt with trauma from things that had happened like 10 years earlier and in childhood of things that you know and it's not about being a victim it's just going like oh wow if that's there and for whatever reason this thing that's happening usually what happens is trauma and wounds and stuff we have the ability to just cope especially as kids we just shove it a lot of times shove 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 cope 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 we have great coping mechanisms thankfully god's given us those things to like survive right but they don't just go away um that's why it's almost laughable when people are like they're like talking about little kids and they're like oh don't worry they're, they'll never remember. They're too young to remember. And it's like, they may not remember to be able to tell you they remember, but they remember. It's just going to come. It's just going to come out in a different way because trauma is trauma. Anyway, I'm kind of getting off into the weeds, but all that to say, so very often when something isn't dealt with, it stores in our hearts, you want to call it that, in the rooms of our hearts, uh, as trauma, unhealed situations from living in a sinful world with things that happen that are, that shouldn't, that God never intended to. So, anyway, 
It happened to me. I start and Jess, yeah, professional shover. So that everything started coming to the surface and I was like, what? Where is this coming from? Why, why now? What? I don't even know what to do with this. But I knew I wasn't okay and I knew I had a choice. I was like, either I'm going to deal with this or I'm not going to be okay. And I, I want to heal. I, I want to, you know. And so I just said to the Lord, I was like, Lord, I'll make a commitment. I'll go to this, I'll go to the darkest valley and shadow of whatever this is going on inside my heart. As long as you'll be there with me. Because you said that. So that started a series of a couple years of going to a counselor. And it's not about drumming up stuff that isn't real. It's going like, oh, that's there. Oh, that's there. Right? So sometimes, now get this. And I'm off in the weeds again, but I'll, I'll just say this. Sometimes we cope with stuff by learning how to perform. Like, if I just make it seem like everything's okay, then, like, it should be okay. Well, that's not actually the way to deal with things. Or if I just am good, like, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, and meanwhile, you don't even realize you're not good. Now this, again, it's not drumming up stuff. It's just like addressing things that are the cause of us either being disconnected from God or being disconnected from others, being disconnected from ourselves, like of actually knowing what is going on inside of our own self. So anyway, um, and at first, so I'm kind of making this long, but at first, I was really in a place of shame. I was like, how could I have not known this? I thought I forgave people. I thought I worked through it. And then I was like, oh man, I must have just not done something right. And the Lord was so kind to come to me and he's like, no, you did what you could when you could, when you're 18. He's like, I, I did not allow that to come up then because you wouldn't have been ready to deal with it. I was like, oh... So he's like, there's no shame, just whatever comes up now in the moment, just get with me and let's do it. So anyway, that was 11 years ago. And what was amazing was as I processed through the unhealed trauma and the Lord came into those places and he, he helped me to understand what that was about and, and where to put the heavy burdens you know, like to unpack those with him. The anxiety attacks started going away, the panic, all of that. And I was able to, because I was in a place of making some really important decisions, I was actually able then to make those decisions with wisdom, not from a place of fear or anxiety. So I praise God for that so much. But anyway, that was a very long explanation for inner healing and or counseling, what I would recommend everyone should go through, not because we're looking for fake stuff to just gaze at our navels and be like, well, what's wrong with me? I must have, no, no. It's just recognizing that, well, we all need, we all need trusted people to process through things with, and a lot of us, and there are people who study that to be really good processors and what's even better is if they're connected to the Holy Spirit then they get to help discern and walk through those places so that's all that is but very important so anyway okay so about two months ago um, in my entrepreneurs group they really encourage people to do that to do like two sessions sorry if my internet is super choppy I see that I'm like all choppy so I apologize if it is hopefully you can still hear me I don't know. But, so, so anyway, what happened was, um, I was like, well, I'm going to schedule a call, a prayer call, um, with a gal who does the inner healing prayer. And so I did that. And I knew that the Lord specifically had put it on my heart to, 
to um, a specific issue that he wanted to just talk to me about. I was like, sounds good. Yep, I know. I agree with that. So anyway, um, but I had this vision as we were praying. She's like, let's just sit with the Lord. We know the Lord's here and see if he wants to show you anything. Or, and, um, you know, we talked through some things and then we, I just sat and, um, and then I had this vision and it was, the, it was of this. It was like, you know, like in the movie, The Cast, or, uh, Cast Away with Tom Hanks, or, um, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean, or what's that, like The Princess Bride and the Fire Swamp. Just, that's not a perfect example, but the scene being, you get washed up on a deserted island, and there's the sand, you know, and you're like, oh. and then there's the jungle, and it's all grown over, and like super scary noises, wild animals, and who knows what. Well, so that's what I was seeing in this vision. I was walking on the beach and walking towards all the jungly, everything that was grown up and over, and I was like, and I knew I was supposed to go in, but I was so scared, and there really wasn't a way. It was awesome. It was all overgrown, but I felt like the Lord was like, that's the direction you're supposed to go. Like, what I have for you is that way, and I was like, I, I, I don't know how to do that it's too much and um and all at once it was like Jesus turned into this ninja not really a ninja but he had <laughs> this huge machete but I didn't even know he had it he came up from behind me and he's like yeah! and he chopped all of the vines that were all over all in one fell swoop just top to bottom and they all just went and it opened up in front of me this path this clear pathway opened up in front of me and he's like now go and I was like yeah and I started down the path I started running and then no sooner as I like gotten my run on this nasty scary being jumped out from the jungle onto the path and was like Rah! like I'm gonna eat you or and I was like, ah, and then at that very second, Jesus ran up again. I didn't even realize because I was just like, I'm running. I didn't realize he was right behind me, but Jesus just came in again and he goes, Whoop! and he sliced that thing's head right off in front of me. And I was like, Whoop! and then that wasn't it. Then it got really good. Then I could see he was mad. He was mad that that thing tried to stop me. So, cutting its head off wasn't enough. He like grabbed it. He like both hands and he just grabbed it. The decap. Sorry, this is a little bit. This is a little bit graphic now. So, I'm just telling you what I saw. He grabbed the thing. He had just, and he picked it up and he goes. Rah! And all of a sudden I realized we're kind of at this like, you know, a hibachi grill like at one of those Japanese steakhouses where it's like all super, they like, put the oil on it, it's like, and they put all the meat and vegetables on it, start doing all the fancy stuff. It was like that big thing. And he like slammed that thing that had come against me onto that. And then he grabbed his machete again. And he starts going like in one of those Hell's Kitchen cooking shows where they're really good. And you're like, how do they not slice their fingers off? He grabs the machete and he goes. <laughs> he starts chopping it up in these little pieces. And I was like, oh my gosh. And then all of a sudden I realize I'm not just standing there anymore. I'm actually sitting at a huge banquet table in on the, on the sand. And I knew this is the Lord's table. This is the table of abundance. I just knew that in my spirit. Like, that's what came to me. I knew where I was sitting. I was like, this is what the, the where the Lord's invited me. And I'm watching him, and he's like, <laughs> just mad at this thing. Like, how dare you? How dare you? It's already dead, by the way. <laughs> but he, and he's looking at me, and he's like, chop, 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 chop. And then he starts flipping it. And cooking it, and it's like, kss, kss, kss. and he looks at me, and he's like, like I told, like I, I told you to run, and this thing came against that, and I'm not happy. And he's just like kss, flipping it over, and then he finishes, and he puts it in this, like 
flat earth thing and he puts it in front of me. And then he leans in and he says, did I not say that I prepared a table before you in the presence of your enemies? And I was like, you did say that. You did say that. Come on, Jesus. Come on. Like, you're my fierce defender. You're my fierce defender. And I know that's a very different scene that I just described than lying in green pastures beside still waters. And yet, is it? Is it really? I don't think it is at all. He's like, when you're... I prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. And you know, I didn't even realize until right now, Jesus was behind me. I didn't always perceive him, but at the second that I needed him, he's like, Yes! Goodness and mercy. Because I'm good. I'm the good shepherd and I'm your fierce defender. I was like, whoa, Lord. Oh, here comes the diva. Hello. Would you like to come join diva? Oh, I know. He's like, no. I just wanted you to know that my boat. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Guys, no animals were hurt in making it. I'm sorry. Can I, like, poke you? So, great fierce defender, a good shepherd. Oh, Chloe. She's so cute. You know, can you see her paws are crossed? No, she's like, okay, I'm not really bad. She is real. Anyway. Um, so, the thing I wanted to bring up is just a reminder of who our good shepherd is. There she goes. Ah who our Good Shepherd is, and all the, the facets, the facets of our Shepherd, the facets of the rod and the staff, where he'll correct us, but it's because he's good. He'll protect us, because he's good. He'll comfort us, because he's good. All of those, because he's good. And this is why we come to Jesus, because he's like, I'm the Good Shepherd, come to me. I'm the good shepherd. Trust me. Like, you come to me and I, I take you, I lead you to the Father's house. And then he calls us to do the same, like I was bring, like I was bringing up about Peter. Right? But Peter wasn't like the only guy, the uber special. Yeah, he was special. But he set a pattern for all of us. Like where we can see Jesus training the disciples when he says in John 15 and 16, he's like, and 17, he's like, I don't just pray for these. This is in Jesus' prayer to the Father, like, before he's crucified. He's like, Father, I'm not just praying for these in front of me, you know, who are right here. He's like, I'm praying for all who come after. So I think that pretty clearly sets the pattern that Jesus is like, hey, do the same thing that you see me do. You do it. You do it. You do it. Keep doing this. It's really, really important. And so the other thing that I wanted to, um, to focus on, and, and I would encourage you, go back. Like, you may have read Psalm 23 a million times, but tonight, even after we get done here, go back. Read it again with the Lord. Read it again with that story that I just told you. Um, and that not just the Good Shepherd, but the Fierce Defender. Because another thing that we might have to grapple with is times in our life where we haven't felt defended, where we felt vulnerable and went, Lord, where are you? I, I don't know where you are. I don't, I didn't see you in that circumstance. I feel like you abandoned me. When the wolves came, I feel like you didn't use your staff to drive them away. I felt like you let me be thrown to the wolf, so to speak. And so this is so much even of inner healing where we get to be with the Lord and say, Lord, I would you show me? Not that he has to give us all the answers, but in his goodness to trust, like, if you have something more, 
um, that you want to show me about this, I, I want to hear. And that we make sure that we're not judging, that we're not casting judgments to say like, God wasn't there for me. God didn't do this for me. Well, in order to know the truth, that, that's much more the enemy um, accusing God. But if we'll just say, God, it feels like you weren't there for me. And you know that's okay. Say, God, it feels like you weren't there for me. But you say goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. You say you're the good shepherd. You're my fierce defender. So help me understand. Like that's a place of humility. And just going, I want to hear from you. I don't want to make a judgment. So this is really important, you guys. Um, and I just hope it's encouraging to think about that. I hope it's helpful. I hope it's, you know, even if you, like I said, if you've read it a million times. But sometimes... We just hear one phrase and it sticks out and that's where the Holy Spirit wants to minister to us or teach us something new or bring a revelation, a greater revelation and understanding for us to pass on to someone else. Um, and it's all about, it's all about us being in relationship with Him and continuing to have, uh, really it's like working out our salvation and it's such an important process. So, um, I wanted to sing a couple songs tonight. There's one I'm just gonna, it's called Shepherd, and I love it. I love this song. And then we're gonna sing Great is Thy Faithfulness. I'll grab my guitar. Chloe decided to come sit at my little feet. I said little feet just because I'm talking about her, so it's like, she's so cute. She's so cute. Let me grab my I'm trying not to smash my cat. <laughs> okay.
Take my hand and lead me on. Yes, good shepherd. Great defender. This was my mom's favorite song.
pray through this once more and I just encourage you even if you can if you're in a place where you can just close your eyes and say Lord would you show me a picture of what it looks like for you to be my fierce defender If you already know that, then just connect with him. Just connect with his love and his goodness and mercy over you. We can never get enough. It's impossible. It's impossible to get too much of God because if we're filled up, then it just overflows. But it's impossible. So I just encourage you to just sit for a couple minutes invite his spirit to take you where he wants you to go to show you what you need to see or to hear what you need to hear. Maybe you just need to step into the Father's heart. Let Jesus lead you there. I don't know what it is, but I just want to play through this again, not even singing it, but just playing you Lord that you're faithful to speak to us and you said we hear your voice that your sheep hear your voice Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and mercy. Thank you that you take it seriously when the enemy comes in like a flood. Your word says when the enemy comes in like a flood, that you raise up a standard against him. Lord, I thank you. You are righteous and true, which means every injustice you will make right. We may not see it with our eyes in the moments we'd like to, you may not perceive what it is you're doing always in every moment. But again, Lord, we enter that into that space of trust, of anchor, anchor-rooted trust in your goodness and mercy. Thank you, Lord, for tonight. Thank you for your word. Thank you for my friends who would take the time to also sit with your word together. And I pray blessings over each one of you in Jesus' name. All right. Thanks so much. I hope you're encouraged. And we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night, everybody.